What do we need to know about clinical trial endpoints? Clinical trial endpoints are broadly divided into three categories, primary, secondary, and tertiary endpoints. The primary endpoint is decided before the trial starts and directly addresses the hypothesis of the study. The primary outcome forms the basis of the trial design, including sample size and power analysis. Secondary endpoints are additional endpoints that are examined if the primary outcome is statistically significant. These are less important endpoints. It is important to remember that the trial is not powered to secondary endpoints, so these should be interpreted with caution. Tertiary endpoints, if used, are the least important. These are considered hypothesis generating. A vital consideration when evaluating the endpoints of a clinical trial is the importance of the endpoint to the patients. Endpoints can be classified as disease-oriented or patient-oriented. Disease-oriented evidence is non-clinical evidence that addresses factors that do not have a direct impact on patients. Examples include cholesterol levels or hemoglobin A1C levels or imaging findings. These outcomes are not as important to patients as clinical outcomes. The main problem with using disease-oriented evidence is that it doesn't always correspond to the morbidity and mortality results that were presumed. For example, the drug rosiglitazone lowers hemoglobin A1C, but was never shown to improve clinical outcomes from diabetes, but in fact increases the risk of cardiovascular harm. Making treatment decisions based solely on disease-oriented evidence can result in unnecessary treatment, costs, unintended harms, or the possibility of no real benefit. On the other hand, patient-oriented evidence measures outcomes that patients care about, such as quality of life and quantity of life. Patient-oriented evidence that matters, or POEM, measures outcomes that patients and clinicians care about. Examples include cardiovascular events like heart attack or stroke, vision loss, kidney failure, or quality of life. When making patient care decisions, we want to use evidence that is patient-oriented as much as possible. A clinical trial may use singular endpoints, co-primary endpoints, composite endpoints, or surrogate markers. A study with a singular endpoint has one primary endpoint. Although having one endpoint is simple and requires less participants, singular endpoints are not often used because one endpoint may not capture all of the important effects of an intervention. A study with co-primary endpoints uses two or more primary endpoints of equal importance. The aim of the study is to show an effect for both endpoints. Co-primary endpoints are useful if demonstration of two or more outcomes is necessary to establish clinical benefit. For example, the FRAME study investigated the incidence of fracture with romosuzumab compared to placebo in postmenopausal women with osteoporosis. The study used the co-primary endpoints of new vertebral fractures at 12 months and 24 months to establish efficacy. Results of studies with co-primary endpoints can be more difficult to interpret. There is an increased risk of type 2 error because each endpoint carries a probability of type 2 error, and these are combined when there are multiple endpoints. This increased risk of type 2 error can lower statistical power and requires a larger sample size to overcome. In many disease states, Clinical improvement can be measured by more than one sign, symptom, measurement, or patient outcome. This is where composite endpoints come into play. A composite endpoint is the combination of two or more individual endpoints into a single outcome measure. If a participant experiences any one of the components, they meet the criteria for the composite endpoint. Composite endpoints are used because fortunately, event rates occur infrequently since medical treatments generally work well to keep people healthy. So determining a difference in event rates requires large sample sizes, longer follow-up time, and increased costs. 
A composite endpoint can demonstrate a significant effect with a smaller, more efficient trial because the individual components occur more frequently and in a shorter amount of time. Results from trials that use composite endpoints can be complicated to interpret. Oftentimes, the effect is smallest for the most important component and largest for the less important components. When reading such trials, it is important to evaluate the individual components to see what is driving statistical significance. Authors tend to perform post hoc analyses on composite endpoints. These should be interpreted with caution and considered hypothesis generating. Surrogate endpoints are a substitute or proxy measure for a clinical outcome. These are typically disease-oriented, such as hemoglobin A1c, or cholesterol levels. Studies that use surrogate markers are quick and less expensive to conduct. However, the results may be misinterpreted, and they may not always predict clinical benefit. The primary endpoint should be appropriate for the study purpose and measured using validated techniques and methods. Validated instruments ensure the production of reliable, accurate results. This is especially important for surveys, questionnaires, subjective measures, and surrogate endpoints. In studies with clinical outcomes, endpoint adjudication is important. Adjudication means the verification of an outcome. Adjudication is used when the outcomes of interest are made up of clinical events. This helps to reduce the risk of bias that can occur when the interpretation of results is different with different medical providers. If used, outcomes are independently adjudicated by a third party blinded to treatment assignment. This is generally stated in the methods section. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps your understanding of clinical trial endpoints.